Good afternoon. Um, first of all, uh, my name is Amichai Pardo, and I'm an actor of the Ona Porat Theatre for Children and Youth in Tel Aviv. Uh, first of all, I want to thank again the organizer for this perfect uh, conference and uh, very honored to participate here and to be invited uh, to speak in front of you. Um, during the last uh, 20 years, I've been specialized in portraying uh, historical figures in historical monodramas for children. And what I will try to, to, to do today is uh, give you a short background about our theater, and then to uh, share with you my experience with uh, three different uh, historical figures and the performances uh, that are running nowadays to children um, and also about the impact they have on the children, reactions from the children and I will leave some uh, time for questions, discussion, uh, etc. Uh, so the On Apparat Theatre for Children and Youth uh, was founded by the famous actress Orna Porat, she won the Israeli Prize for Theater, um, but her uh, original name is Irena Klein. <laughs> she came from a non-Jewish uh, family in Germany. She was born in Köln in 1924, and she even was part of the Hitler Jugend as a young girl. And when she grew up, she began to understand what's going on in Germany. When she was a young actress, she was called by an officer of the police to, to tell about the political opinions of her colleagues, of the directors, of the uh, playwriters. And the only way she could go out, of, to, to go out from it uh, um, uh, was to tell uh, theater gossips, like this actress is not so beautiful as they say. I don't understand why they don't do enough Shakespeare. So she talked about theater instead of the political views. And also she uh, happened to meet some forced la laborers from East Europe and heard about the communism and about the Soviet Union. So right after the war, she felt that she cannot live anymore in Germany. And she tried to cross the border to the Soviet Union. She was caught by British soldier, soldiers, and she was investigated by a young officer from Palestine that joined the Jewish Brigade. And he was from German origin, from Keln, and they got in love. <laughs> and, and both of them came to uh, Palestine together, and uh, immediately she began to be a very famous actress in Israel, and as she told me, that she felt it's not enough to be an actress in Israel because she need to thank the people of Israel that accepted her as a non-Jewish actress, actress as a German, right after the Holocaust, and gave their, her the stage. And her way to give back to the people of Israel was to found a th professional theater for children. So you, she went to the Minister of Education at that time, Igal Alon, and asked him to uh, found a theater, professional theater for children, and he accepted a request on condition that she will be the first arti artistic director of this theater. And this happened in 1970. And I think two things she gave uh, our theater, first of all, is her uh, perfectionism. And if you don't want to be politically correct, you can say her German perfectionism. <laughs> so a rehearsal is a rehearsal, time is time. If a performance has to go, it will be on time. And this remained I in our theater. And the next thing is a slogan that she quoted from the famous uh, Russian uh, director, Konstantin Stanislavsky, that when he was asked what's <laughs> good theater, for children is, he said, the same as for adults, only better. <laughs> and this remained the slogan of our, uh, of our theater. As you can see, good theater for children can be in different ways. 
because it's different ages, different subjects, different format. And uh, you see here performances for one years old and for uh, teenagers, so for all the uh, different audiences. But uh, uh, from my experience with different artistic director, I understood that different artistic directors have different attitudes and each one of them brought something else to the theater. On apparat was more traditional in this way that the children has to adapt themselves to the plays and you can bring Shakespeare or Moliere and they will adapt. And then they understood that the writing has to be adapted to the children. Uh, Hagit Rechavi was one that was born with the state of Israel and brought historical plays to the theater uh, about the foundation of the state of Israel, about Holocaust subjects and um, especially she was concentrated about the writing because she was a playwright. Then came Zvia Uberman, that she is one of the founders of the uh, School of Arts in Tel Aviv. She was concentrated in artistic values, sceneries, costumes, music. And then Yaki Machas and Razia Mitai, who were, didn't come from the center from Tel Aviv and brought the voice of social problems of immigrants, of the immigrants from Ethiopia, etc. As I told you, what I'm doing in the theater is specializing in portraying historical figures. Mm -hmm. uh, whoever saw yesterday the performance about Janusz Kocek, the Jewish-Polish educator, one of the first to talk about children's rights. And this is me as Eliezer Ben Yehuda, the big fighter for the revival of the Hebrew language to be a spoken language. And of course, Theodor Herzl, the visionary of the state of Israel. Who you can see, the all three of, of them. And what we try in this, bringing these historical figures to children, is to see how we bring them to be a source of inspiration for the children of today, not make it a history lesson. How we want it to be relevant for the life today, for the future, and not as a history lesson. We don't come to replace the teachers. So what we try to do is uh, to put the focus on the vision rather on the person or his biography or dates for example, with Herzl, the vision is not just to found a state, but which kind of a state we want here, uh, Israel to be, what will be the future of Israel, what will be the future of Zionism, uh, how can they, the children, be leaders like Herzl. In uh, Eliezer ben Yehuda, we felt that the fight for uh, the Hebrew language is not over and uh, because of many reasons uh, children reads less and I will talk about it later but we felt that we want instead of saying to the children your Hebrew is not good enough we want to uh, make them aware and passionate about their language and Janusz Korczak as I tried to do yesterday in the performance is to bring his pedagogical uh, philosophy using one of his short stories and take him out a bit from the uh, from being only a Shoah hero. So, how it all started. 21 years ago, Israel celebrated the 100th anniversary of the First Zionist Congress and I was invited uh, by the Ministry of Education to a big conference uh, in Mikveh Israel about, about Zionism. And it was very similar to this conference, a lot of teachers, a lot of uh, principals, and they wanted me to make uh, Theodor Herzl as a street theater, in format of street theater. And from day one, I saw that the impact was amazing. Everyone wanted to talk with Mr. Herzl. <laughs> and to talk with him about the political situation, about the peace process, about the economic crisis. A lot of talking about Israel of today. And this was what amazed me. They didn't 
ask Herzl about the first Zionist Congress. Mm -hmm. They talked about Israel of today, about the future of Israel. For them, it was as if you will meet, I don't know, uh, Angela Merkel, and talk about the future of Europe. So it's like meeting one that you feel that can change things, can change the world. And this informal interaction uh, was very uh, powerful. And after two, three days, I received more than 20 invitations to come with this figure to the children, to the schools. And then we had to think how we make this street theater to be a performance and how it's not teachers, it's children, and how we adapt this to children. And I began to work with Gil Cernovich uh, as a writer and director. And the first decision we made was to start with Herzl, the child. So the children can, uh, the children can uh, see that Herzl was not born a leader, but became a leader. And it was like saying to them that you can be leaders too. So they see Herzl, the child, the student, the journalist, the politician, and only then what was called at that time the king of the Jews. And because we want to keep this informal interaction, so instead of writing roles for other actors, we decided that children themselves will be my partners. And so we will keep this interaction between Herzl and the audience, uh, the actor and, he, and the children. And so as you can see here, they became the German Kaiser William II, the Archduke Friedrich von Baden, the Turkish Sultan Rothschild, etc. And they can interact and be leaders in uh, one minute. The other thing was uh, we want them to uh, adapt the visionary thinking of uh, Herzl to make them have their vision. And so we put in the play, uh, and now I will quote from the play sentences like, friends, I have found the solution for the problem of the Jewish people. You may laugh at me and my crazy plan, but one doesn't give up on one's dream. You hear that? Never give up on your dream, on your dream, on your dream. So it's not only the dream of Theodor Herzl. It's also your dream, you, the children, and your dreams. So you have to find what is your dream and fight for it. And later on in the performance, and I quote again, uh, we put sentences like, it's not enough to simply found a state. What matters is what kind of a state you are founding. I have done my share. Now it's your turn. We are all Herzl's. You are all little Herzl's. And your duty is to continue realizing the dream. So we don't come to the children and say Israel as a model state is perfect, everything is ideal. No, not at all. There's a lot to do. And we, the others, did the best we can. And now it's your turn to change Israel, to make it much better in all aspects. Then when we work with children, of course, you must use uh, humor. It's not enough uh, just to, to, to talk about leaders. And there, right in the beginning of the performance, uh, I say, Julie? Father, mother, I met someone. <coughs> She's a sweet, lovely young woman. And her name is? Julie. Julie is wonderful. And I fall in love with her. Julie, I'm 29. I'd like to ask you to marry me. Will you say yes? I will, Herzl. Oh! <laughs> see that there. Round of applause. Thank you. So as you saw, in one minute, I have in the audience, I have father, I have mother, I have Julie. 
so I have with whom to interact. And also, when Herzl experienced crisis, he has partners. He has someone to share uh, his feelings. And if we want to teach children to be leaders, they will have to face crisis too. Like when Herzl, no one wants to publish his book, The Jewish State. When he come all the way to the state of Israel to receive a negative answer from the German Kaiser William II, or in the Sixth Congress, when he comes with the with Uganda scheme, and people live in the middle of the Congress, and then again we there is a part of this crisis in the play when Herzl is saying, Julie. The Uganda scheme caused the great turmoil of the Congress. They called me a traitor. The Russian delegates said they will go to hell before they will go to Uganda. Mother, they said that the Africa scheme is a death blow to Zionism. Father, they were so upset. They said, how is it possible that after 2,000 years in diaspora, the Jewish people will venture out to live in the African jungle? They misunderstood me, members of the Sixth Zionist Congress. The Uganda scheme is merely a temporary solution until we get strong and organized and move to the land of Israel, I swear. If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. So the children understand it's their story and they are part of the dilemmas of the crisis and of uh, the vision of Theodor Herzl and they understand that we address and we ask them to continue the movement, the vision, the dreams. Whoever saw my performance yesterday and whoever know the philosophical approach of Janusz Korczak can see that in all we did, <laughs> immediately we made a photo, uh, we Whoever knows the uh, philosophical approach of, uh, uh, of Korczak knows that what we did in Herzl was very Korczakian, if you may say so. Because it's this dialogue that Korczak wants to be between the adult and the child. The children are partners, not me the actors, you the audience. No, you can be actors like me. And they participate and they we put, we, are, we put ourselves in the same level. And another principle is always to search for the child's point of view. When we start with Herzl the child. And to listen, to let the children participate, give them roles as Korczak is doing too, uh, when he gives them a lot of roles in the orphanage and listen what the children has to say and what a child has to say as an individual. So it was very natural that the next performance would be about Janos Korczak. And this time I worked with another director, Ruth Kanner from the Tel Aviv University. And the problem we faced was that the only thing that I learned about Janos Korczak in high school was how he went with his children to Treblinka. And now we had this opportunity of not going to with them, and he decided to go with them, like a father with his children. And we were told all this story in Yad Vashem, in Jerusalem, so it was all very tragic. And then I came across an article. I studied a bit education, an article about Janusz Korczak, and I I told myself, there's such, so much more in Korczak than in his death. And we want to bring him back to the children, to the educators. So how we do it, how we don't go to the ghetto, how we don't go to Treblinka. And uh, I talked with Ruth Kanner, and I told her that I came across a short story that is called Ten Matchboxes. And this story was written for storytelling. It's not a story that was written that a child will read it by his own. It is all inside his writing. You can see that it is written for a dialogue between an adult and 
a, a child. For all of, for all of you who didn't who see the performance yesterday, <laughs> it's about a rabbi, a poor rabbi with 10 poor children, and he gives them 10 empty matchboxes. And each one of them is doing something else with these empty matchboxes, and different interactions are being created between the children. But what made me do this story and not others is one sentence that Korchak is saying all the time, he's not finishing the little stories. He leaves them open. And he says all the time, what? Ah, this, I just and, uh, want to understand, the, to tell you about this photo. Here is Korchak, as we know, going to Treblinka. This is the statue from the cemetery in Warsaw. And this is Mr. Marek Michalek, the Ombudsman of the Polish, uh, of the, uh, of Polish government, the Polish Ombudsman of, for Children. And he, today, with the children, also emphasizing the role of Korchak as an educator, as a children writer, and you see when a child is laughing, the whole world is laughing. So he's doing the same in Poland. So as I told you, he's all the time stop the story and say, what happened later? You think about it. And I'll give you an example for those who didn't see the performance. The first matchbox went to Abraham. And Abraham lost his box and that was that. But that wasn't that because when one loses something, another one eh, finds it. If you like, you think about it. Who found Abraham's box? What did he do with it? But I'm in a hurry, so I cannot finish the end of the story. Keep the box for me. We'll do something with it together afterwards. So in two minutes, what Korchak is doing is telling us that to every situation, there are at least two point of views to look at it. One has, one hasn't. One loses, one finds. One receives, one, one gives, one receives. And another thing that he wants to say to us that Sometimes when for you something is a crisis, for another one this can be an opportunity. And also for you, some, some you have a crisis that can be an opportunity for yourself. And the most important thing is children don't wait that we, the others, will solve your problems. What happened later, you think about it. You can write the end of this story and you can solve problems and in this performance as some of you saw yesterday we raise problems of uh, uh, empathy of um, um, imagination creativity uh, doing a lot with uh, nothing the poor child different dialogue between an adult and the child so so many values are going with these empty matchboxes and with little uh, stories and what is important that the solutions comes from the children and also this is his way to solve conflicts between children is not giving the answer how to solve these conflicts he has this <coughs> children's code and here you see the two children are fighting over this empty matchbox and they have to do the fight and to see the mothers in the interview and five judges stay there and have to judge the situation in accordance with the original rules from the orphanage this photo was taken from uh, Geneva from the United Nations because the uh, International Ecotech Association is doing every year one day with the uh, Committee of Children's Rights and together they take one sentence from the uh, um, uh, Declaration of Children's Rights and they do a whole day about it and in this time I was invited and they brought children from different countries to participate in this day and to participate in the performance and they have to judge the situation in accordance with the uh, uh, rules that were used in Warsaw uh, by Janusz Korczak. The last figure that I will talk about 
is uh, Eliezer Ben Yehuda. And again, the motivation was to bring, this is another writer and director, Shiri Lideshe. Uh, and the motivation was this feeling that, first of all, the language, the Hebrew language, and I saw here a lot of Hebrew teachers, is not only a way to communicate. It's the culture, it's the identity, it's our nationality, so we want to strengthen the language in the children to, to make them aware from where the words come. For example, uh, that chavita, uh, omelet, comes from the word machvat. Okay, that we, we're doing the omelet with, how do you say it? Hmm? Okay, you see, in English it's not the same word, in Hebrew, yes. Or the word towel, in Hebrew is magevet. Who knows that the word magevet comes from negev, this desert in Israel that is so dry. So we are making us like a desert. So, and when you hear this during the performance, and for example, how to pronounce that there is this difference between a chaf and het, that you can say hadera. You can say hen hen. Try to say hen hen. Hen hen. Or to say Ayn. Ayn. Yes. Ayn. Okay, those are not Aleph. And all these things that the children in Israel, for them it's the same word, it's the same uh, letter. And when they do it, it's a lot of fun because they try it and it's difficult also for them if they, they don't come from the right origin. <laughs> and uh, in this way, they come from even my children. It's saw the performance where, where they all were already teenagers, they said, now we say words and we are aware where this word comes from Arabic, this comes from Yiddish, this comes from the Bible, this is a new word. And wow, I say something and it's in English, it's not, maybe we can replace it with a new word. <coughs> so this being aware to the language is the purpose and we did like one day when in the morning Eliezer Ben Yehuda opened the window and he hear all the kind of languages and in the evening he opened the window and he hears Hebrew. So we put all his life in one day because we didn't care about his life. We wanted to <laughs> emphasize words, 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 words and the language and that the children will uh, try to taste the words that they use without taking care about. If we say that the performances are not focused about history, about details, this means that we need the teachers. We need the teachers to prepare the children before the performance. We need the teachers to talk with the children after the performance. This is, for example, a preparation a, a booklet that we made for uh, Eliezer Ben Yehuda. And the teachers get it before the performance. <coughs> and in this way, they can teach them of what is dialect, what is Yiddish, what is Ladino, all these Jewish dialects, which words Eliezer Ben Yehuda invented, which he didn't, which words he invented and were not accepted, and which words we are using in every day that we, there are new words and you don't, you're not aware that there are Hebrew words for these words. So, all this preparation before and about his life and also afterwards to talk about it is, is very important and this is why the performances usually go to schools so you have this the teachers that will give the background and will talk about it afterwards and the same with Korchak, the same with Herzl we need the teachers because they can go deeper afterwards to talk about what the children participated uh, uh, enjoyed, but this can go to a deeper level. So now let's understand what are the reactions of the children. If I said in the beginning that what was important for us, it's the performance that will be relevant for the 
life of the children today, not only a history lesson. lesson. And here I quote from a child that wrote to me this letter. <coughs> I wanted to tell you that something wrong is happening at school. The teachers keep saying how good Janusz Korczak teaching method is, but they don't work according it. And that seems not right to me. I would like the teacher here also to listen to the student when he does something bad, to give him a chance and to defend himself. So you see, he's not talking about what happened, about the orphanage, about history. He is talking about his life in his school. And in many reactions that I get from the children after the performance, that they come and say, why not in our school? Why we don't have a children's court? Why we don't have democracy? Why the children, we don't have a newspaper that we can express ourselves? So they think it's relevant to their life. And also, for example, there is the fight. And I bring a child that is a bully a bit. And they judge him. And this, I, it, was, it happened to me a couple of times. And there are several sentences from the original Book of Rules. And 900 is the last one that he should be thrown out of the orphanage unless another child takes take responsibility on him. And he sees that he doesn't get the 100, he got, doesn't get the 200, he doesn't get the 500. And I see a nervous child because he f understands that they will give him the 900. And many times I take this child and tell him, relax, it's only performance. They're not judging you, they're judging the role. And then he say out loud, and it happened more than one time, no, I'm bullying too. So he can admit, understand that the children give him the punishment, not because what happened in the performance, but because they are not happy with his behavior in everyday life. And his opportunity to say to them, yes, I know, I'm like this. This is the first step to change for him. So all the performance bring us to understand that it is relevant for the children uh, today. Another uh, example is on March 12, 17, I performed in Caracas in Venezuela. I don't know how many of you know the situation in Caracas. Terrible situation for the Jewish community. And, and for all the people there in Venezuela. And I performed, and the children participated and enjoyed the performance. But the adults there cried, and I mean cried not literally, because they understood that here come Herzl to say to them, take your things, you have a place, you have a state, you have where to go. And when they heard it, they had to give themselves answers why we are still here. And one of them told me it's like before the Holocaust. The situation is horrible. And we stick to our places because of job, because of money, because of one old lady in the family that we don't know how she will adapt to the state of Israel because language. But they were so moved because they felt that I'm not talking about the past. I'm talking to them today. And this immediate interaction made this, that Herzl is coming to them to talk with them about Zionism now, today. It's not this big stage with the light when you are confident in your chair, but this interaction bring people to think about their life. And the same happened to me in uh, San Francisco to the Israeli community when one of the mothers, it was mothers with children, and she got up and said, this year we are coming back to Israel. <laughs> and they get there, it's, you know, this high-tech community in San Francisco. They have a lot of money. It's all people that came there because of the high-tech. And she felt that it's the last minute because her children were like, 10 years old. If they will stay in high school, they will never come back to Israel. And she decided. Uh, when I talk about Eliezer Ben Yehuda, sometimes the reaction is negative and I like it. What do I mean? This year, I performed with uh, Eliezer Ben Yehuda in Carmiel, all the schools of Carmiel. And 
we have a now in Kermiel there are a lot of Russian immigrants and you hear more Russian than Hebrew in the schools and some of them felt that I come with Herzl to say to them speak Hebrew and now we ben want Yehuda. to speak Russian with Eliezer Ben Yehuda so we speak out so they came to me after the performance and began to speak with me in Russian <laughs> okay see we have all you have to say and we want to speak in Russian <laughs> and what I felt they got the idea they are against it and it's okay but they understood what I want to say and this brought me to talk with them don't leave your Russian learn Russian and be able to read Pushkin in Russian or Dostoevsky but learn Hebrew so you can create in Hebrew communicate read all the Bible the, in Hebrew so this is you have two you have your Hebrew roots you uh, 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 and you have to connect to the Hebrew language and but don't leave the Russian language and the other thing is that you are the one that will bring the Hebrew language to your homes because your grandmother speak Russian and maybe your parents speak Russian but you have a mission to bring the Hebrew language to your family and to your children so they understood that I'm not against the Russian culture but that they moved and they have now to change things and to adapt also the Hebrew language um, okay uh, the last thing solidarity and personal empowerment what I feel in these performances as you heard in sessions that talked about Israel the Israel is so divided politically and they have uh, left and uh, right and immigrants and uh, North Tel Aviv and the, the villages far away uh, and there's a lot of tensions and a lot of uh, arguments in Israel but what I found that when I come for example with Janusz Korczak I can go to all the population in Israel I even found myself in the same week performing to Arabic school in Jaffa and to a settlement in Judea and Samaria and they all could identify with the educational point of view and philosophy of Janusz Korczak so sometimes when you bring these historical figures this can connect and be a something to be a co make a cohesion in the society and solidarity and different people that usually argue can find these figures be a source of inspiration for them and also it brings personal empowerment for the children that they feel that they can be leaders like Herzl they can be writers like Korczak one time I performed in uh, uh, for immigrants from Ethiopia and one child came to me at the end of the performance because usually I, I try that the children will come to me after the performance I say to them you can see some pictures or you can uh, see a dictionary of Eliezer Ben Yoda or something that will bring them to these talks after the performance and he told me I want to be a writer like Janusz Korczak but I don't have patience and I asked this 10 years immigrant from Ethiopia and I asked him how many children saw the performance? He said 100. He said, how many remained to speak with me after the performance? He said 20. He said, how many children remained till now? He said, we are three. So I said, you are one of the three that have more patience than all the others. So of course you have patience, of course you can be a writer. So sometimes these interactions are not in the performance, but after the performance. Um, so as I said, it brings Solidarity in society and empowerment of the individuals. Okay, we have some time for questions, discussion, whoever wants to ask or say something. I'm here. How, how do we get you to come to our school? <laughs> 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 this is Eran Berkovich, you heard about him? Yeah. 
this is the person. Yes, the World Zionist organization is taking me to all Jewish communities all over the world. Uh, and in Israel, of course, I perform as well. Uh, if you don't have question, I give you only one. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's more of a question okay. about your practice. So, do you find there's much of a difference on the responses of the children if you perform in Hebrew or in English? Uh, no, I find it's not the question of language, it's question of, of culture. Mm -hmm. So, of course, uh, whoever worked with both societies know there is difference between the children in Israel and children in Australia. Mm -hmm. I never heard an Australian teacher telling the class before the performance, if we will not be quiet, we will not start the performance. <laughs> what usually <laughs> happened happens in Israel. So, and many times it's 10 minutes before we start the performance. And of course, uh, for example, I performed in Poland and I didn't hear that the children entered the venue. <laughs> and I was surprised that I had to start the performance because it was like 70 children of, of high school that entered the venue and they didn't hear anything and I was uh, at their room. So there are different things. On the other thing, children in Israel love to participate and they all of them want to be on the stage <laughs> and all of them has opinions and when you ask them if you have an idea what can I do with my yes, yes, empty yes. matchbox they have 50 <laughs> ideas so it's a startup nation as you know <laughs> and also it begins from the children Portland. yes um, how did you try to lose three mostly these characters. I had an experience with another character of Van Gogh that I did. Mm. But as you know, uh, he's not Jewish. So, <laughs> 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 so then I thought maybe I should take Chagall. And this was really different. And, we, and, and this time when we did this performance, it was not interactive because we felt that Van Gogh is not an interactive <laughs> uh, <laughs> man. Uh, in a way, he was so inside, inside his madness. What we try, what we did there, was actually very interesting. We we took the last painting of uh, of Van Gogh uh, that are Orvim uh, Orvim curves, crows, crows. Uh, on a wheat uh, field and in the beginning of the performance I have a, a blank uh, a white sheet uh, sh and then during the performance I'm painting the last painting of Van Gogh so when he will end the painting it will be the end of uh, Van Gogh's uh, life and what we tried also to say that he was not an artist because he was mad, but he was artist although he was uh, mad. Uh, but uh, especially I'm working with these three art uh, uh, figures. Yeah. What language, is language ever a barrier when you're performing in Caracas or in Poland? What are you talking? Are you uh, when I do the performances in non-English speaking languages, languages, it's two ways. When I did it Herzl with uh, Caracas, we di they insisted that I will perform in Hebrew and they had two screens with a Spanish uh, translation. So the children saw the translation and heard me in Hebrew uh, and uh, in this way I, I worked also in uh, Romania, we did it like this. With Korchak, what I did in many countries that I performed, even in Japan, I performed in English and I came before, for example, there was a theater festival in Japan. I came a couple of days before, worked with a Japanese actor and he was standing on the side and had the translating to Japanese. What happened after two, three minutes that the children understand that they can look at me Hi and everyone, the please wrap up your session so and move to the last like session of the day. Sing, like, no earphones, nothing. Thank you. They hear from here and they interact with me and they speak with me to in Japanese and I ask them. <laughs> and children are children are children are children everywhere. So they can uh, identify. Thank you.